All right, so transitioning to our next speaker, bicycles come to mind. And now you may be thinking, Mr. Blumenauer already spoke, so why are bicycles just now coming to mind? Well, that is because our next speaker is an avid cyclist. And as he will maybe tell you himself tonight, he has found bicycles to be a great metaphor in his work in trade policy. And I would be remiss if I didn't start off our comments about him uh, with a small mention of the bicycles. I will say, though, that your bracelet says something else. I'm going to hand it over to Kate to tell you a little bit more about Mr. Portman. Thank you, Nazim. I did not know that Senator Portman was an avid cyclist. So when I thought about Senator Portman and the Olympics, I immediately went to LeBron James. They have both played for various teams, Senate, House, OMB, USTR. They both had challenges, but also had some big wins. And they're both kind of Ohio royalty. So we all know the stories. In 1993, Senator Portman won a special election to, win, to first represent Ohio's 2nd Congressional District in the United States House of Representatives. He was re-elected six times before resigning upon his appointment by President George W. Bush as USTR representative in May of 2005. As trade representative, Portman initiated trade agreements with other countries and pursued claims at the WTO. In 2006, Bush appointed Portman to the director of OMB. In 2010, Portman announced his candidacy for the U.S. Senate, and he easily won and was reelected in 2016. In January of 2021, he announced he would not be seeking a third term. Well, LeBron James is a four-time NBA champion, four-time MVP, four-time NBA Finals MVP, an NBA career scoring leader, and winner of two Olympic golds, one in 2008 in Beijing and one in 2012 in London. No big deal that LeBron is trying to win Olympic medals 20 years apart. He won his first bronze at the 2004 Games in Athens. So as we all know that LeBron will also probably be LeBron. He has, for decades, played a wide variety of roles in Team USA. He will start at power forward, you can tell I'm a basketball mom, and will spend time running the point and guarding opposing wings, forwards and even centers. So you see this too, right? Portman, LeBron, Portman, LeBron. Well, Senator Portman, we are really excited to invite you up here. Your friendship bracelet Nazim has on, and it highlights the fact that you were really the first of, WT, of USTR to call out China in the Hong Kong conference. Thank you, sir. Well, Kate and Nassim, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Earl probably thought he should have gotten the bicycle reference, but, um, you know, I didn't know that I was going to be talking about bicycles, but just for a moment, when you become U.S. Trade Representative, the Secret Service gives you a code name, and it's a very secret code name that I'm not allowed to talk about, but I will to this crowd, just because you're so special, <laughs> and it was a long time ago. But they gave me the name of Peddler. And they thought that was very cute because it had a double meeting, you know, that I was pedaling a bicycle and pedaling American goods abroad. So, perfect. Who says the Secret Service isn't imaginative and creative? Um, but thank you all for allowing me to be here tonight. This is a great honor. And particularly, I want to thank Ken Levinson for asking me to be his date to the prom. You know, when you're a former senator, uh, you don't get asked often. In fact, last year I was not asked to come to the prom. Kind of hurt my feelings. Um, I didn't make the cut, apparently. So this year I went to Sam Malopoulos, my former trade counsel, who's here tonight. And thank you. Thank you. Sam, come no. um, And I said, Sam, can you sneak me in? He said, RP. I thought you believe in a rules-based system. <laughs> and that's against the rules. 
So I taught him too well. Um, last weekend I was at a conference and a guy came up to me and said, Senator, great to see you. Thank you for your service. And I humbly nodded and said, you know, my honor. And he said, by the way, Senator Frist, <laughs> what are you up to these days? <laughs> I mumbled something about working really hard in heart transplants and just sort of kept moving. Um, at least he didn't confuse me for Bernie Sanders or, or Chuck Grassley. Although I, I shouldn't have said that. With regard to Chuck Grassley, I would really appreciate if somebody tonight would go see Chuck Grassley and tell him that I said that I would have loved to have been confused for Chuck Grassley. He may be the next chairman, you know. I gotta be sure and stay on good terms with him. Um, but look, it's great to be here, and it's really special to be here with Earl, uh, and congratulations, uh, Earl, on what was said earlier about your good service. And my buddy, Kevin Brady, uh, with whom I've worked on so many trade issues, tax issues, and otherwise, um, we're sort of a traveling road show. We go around now and talk about some of these issues, but uh, he's greatly missed, I know. Um, and Team LaHood, uh, you know, I have had the opportunity to work with Darren's dad and work with him, and uh, he is a star, as we just saw here tonight, and will continue to be one of our great leaders on, on trade. It's also, of course, my great honor to be able to play a role in presenting tonight's award to my buddy Chris Coons, who was actually confused for Chancellor Olaf Scholz tonight. Come on, that should get something better than that. <laughs> so it doesn't just happen to me. I just wanted you to know that. Um, so Chris is not only a great friend, we're collaborators and have been on a number of legislative projects over the years. And most importantly, he's a very thoughtful and has been a courageous voice on trade. He understands the importance of expanding exports, having trade that is both good for American workers and farmers and ranchers, but also good for the developing world. Um, there is nobody who's more committed to Africa as an example than Chris Coons in the United States Congress. Um, among our projects working together was writing and introducing the Trade System Preservation Act to reform the WTO. And I'm sure all of you have memorized that bill, but. It's interesting, every former USTR uh, has told us they're supportive of this. Why? Because WTO is not performing, obviously, as it should. And as an example, to have plurilateral agreements where you don't have a total consensus, but you have enough countries coming together and no freeloaders, could put WTO back into the game. So uh, Chris, I know, is going to continue to push that. I think that's very important for our trade agenda going forward. We also introduced the UK Special Relationship Act together, and we co-founded and co-chaired the UK Trade Caucus to advocate for a free trade agreement with the UK. We're about three quarters of the way there. Let's finish that trade agreement and use it as a template for the EU and move on from there. Uh, but that's Chris. Uh, to supercharge American competitiveness and expand our global leadership, we also proposed together negotiating a new FTA with one country in each region of the world. Uh, that would be the UK, that would be Kenya, that would be Ecuador, that would be Taiwan. Wouldn't it be great if all the continents could be covered? And with regard to all these initiatives, I will say as a Republican, it was a lot easier for me to be out there talking about these things. Chris put his neck on the line. You know, in his caucus, it wasn't as easy. And this is where, as I said earlier, he's been courageous in being willing to take on the issues, do what he knows is right, do what he knows is best for his country, his constituents, his state. And I appreciate that. He showed guts. I think what Chris may talk about a little bit is that in particular, he knows that trade across borders in the developing world has been incredibly helpful and contributed to lifting about a billion people out of poverty. And ultimately, that's one reason we're all here tonight, right? We believe in trade. It's no surprise that Chris has taken the lead in the Senate in introducing bipartisan legislation to reauthorize AGOA, the African Growth and Opportunity Act. A couple of years ago, we traveled together to Kenya, Mozambique, and Rwanda to see directly the benefits of AGOA, also to talk about conservation, its impact on the economy and national security. 
No member is more committed to that region and development than Chris Coons. Combined with Chairman Jason Smith's sustained leadership on AGOA and GSP in the House, under Chris's leadership, and only because of his leadership, there is now, in my view, a realistic prospect that Congress will actually reauthorize these important programs by this year's end. That deserves more applause. A go of GSP this year. And as everybody in this room well knows, um, we have no time to lose. We saw this with GSP. We've got to move and move quickly. So in the interest of not losing time, let me tell you that it is my great honor uh, to be able to present the Washington International Trade Association Congressional Leadership Award to a very deserving recipient, Senator Chris Coons. They gave me the most difficult bracelet to read because it's, it's all jumbled up and it's a lot of letters. But it appears to say, reimagine. Chris Coons, reimagining trade. Ladies and gentlemen. Guten Abend. I think, I think Rob misread this. I think it actually said, Guten Abend. To Senator Portman, thank you so much. Um, Annie and I have so enjoyed traveling, Rob, with you and Jane, uh, to different and important parts of the world to see the impact and the power of trade and to legislate together. I cannot tell you how much I miss you representing Ohio in the United States Senate. And if, heaven forbid, the seat should come open, I hope you'll run again. <laughs> Rob allowed me to be his partner in a number of bills he didn't mention, but that were really his bills. Reauthorization of debt for nature swap, for example, a great idea that you led early on. Reauthorization of a bill to help protect endangered wildlife. We did so much together, and my favorite, Stop Taxing Death and Disability, a bill whose name explains its purpose and in fact passed unanimously. So could you give Rob Portman another round of applause for being an incredible advocate on trade? And look, if you're gonna take a position that is a challenge for many in your caucus, it goes so much easier when you've got a positive and strong and capable partner to legislate with. So you know there's a reason to roll up your sleeves and get involved and to get to work. To Ken Levinson of the WIDA, CEO of WIDA, and to the entire WIDA board, to everybody who helps make this annual event happen, um, thank you. I am just sorry I missed the champagne fountain. <laughs> this doesn't remind me at all of my prom. My prom didn't have a Paris theme. My prom was not on the eve of the Olympics and my prom did not have a champagne fountain. I think it had a rolling rock fountain, if I remember correctly. Um, and I, I love the Olympics theme, thank you. I am the co-chair of the French caucus, believe it or not, with John Bozeman. And I was excited to see this place decked out in not red, white, and blue, but blue, white, and red, uncharacteristically. To Congressman Earl Blumenauer, a great friend uh, and colleague, and to former Chairman Congressman Kevin Brady, and to Congressman Darren LaHood, thank you for your service, for your work ethic, for your partnership. Uh, Darren, I love the fact that you literally wrote the book on bipartisanship, having had the chance to know and work with your father, um, having family ties in your district. I have grandparents from several different places in Darren's district. 
Um, I am so grateful that you've been a champion, and in particular, an effective champion for digital trade. Um, and I want to thank, you could give, please, my colleagues a round of applause. One of the questions is, why be excited about trade? Where does this passion or energy for trade come from, from any of us? Any of you or any of us who serve in the Senate or in the House? In my state, I actually think it's easy because I grew up in a coastal state that was founded by trade between Europe and North America and the Caribbean, where there was a huge amount of early investment in building industries that then ended up powering my community, from chemicals manufactured by DuPont and Hercules to cars made by uh, Chevrolet and General Motors to chickens, 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 chickens. I grew up in a community where virtually every job in my town and in my state was connected to trade. And then as you heard from Rob, as a young man, I had the chance to live in Africa and as a young senator to chair the Africa subcommittee to travel with Johnny Isaacson to a dozen countries on the continent and see the transformational power of trade. I also spent eight years as in-house counsel for a global manufacturing company and got to see how that both helped our company at home in the United States and our trading partners around the world. And today my state continues to be trade dependent and trade engaged. We're more engaged in the products and materials and services of the 21st century, but we're still selling more chicken than there are people in Delaware. Trade policy really is at a crossroads, and we need a new generation of champions in Congress. And I won't repeat most of what Congressman LaHood said, which I agree with. It's striking that USMCA, one of the least heralded accomplishments of the Trump administration in partnership with Speaker Pelosi and other leaders in Congress, passed with 89 votes in the Senate showing broad bipartisan enthusiasm for updating and modernizing a rules-based trading system, something that could push back on unfair Chinese competition, that could strengthen the ties in North America, and could modernize chapters that have to do with IP and digital and other issues for this century. Of course, the critiques of the American trade system that led to a lot of the populism of the moment were well-founded. There are far too many towns across the Midwest and the heartland of our country that emptied out as trade accelerated and advanced. And there are too many countries that took advantage of the rules-based system by breaking the rules and stealing American IP or taking advantage of lower standards to dump products into our country. But I still think trade remains the most important tool for us to promote and export our values, to strengthen our soft power relationships with countries around the world, to strengthen and elevate American families and communities if we can just modernize it, fix it, and make it work right. I believe in an open rules-based global trading system, and I think today it's more important than ever. We can't afford to sit on the sidelines and watch others set the rules and dominate the terms of trade of this century. As our president has said just a few moments ago, there is every reason to be more optimistic about America today than ever. There's no country on earth that would trade places, that wouldn't trade places with us, that wouldn't want our innovation, our creativity, our natural resources, our universities, our productivity, our manufacturing. The only thing that holds us back is our political division. So if we can find a way to come together, to chart a new course on what should bring us together, a bipartisan consensus on trade for the 21st century, there's literally nothing that can hold us back. I think that our global leadership in the products of this century, from services to clean energy solutions, from semiconductors to EVs, to the things we've always exported, yes, chicken, 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 to many, many other products, um, can show us the way towards a century of prosperity and American global leadership. I'll mention briefly, Senator Kramer and I are working on a bill, the Prove It Act, that would measure the emissions intensity of heavy industrial products that has a strong bipartisan companion in the House with 20 co-sponsors 
and that would lay the foundation for us to use trade to pursue an ambitious climate agenda. I'm in a room that better, better understands than any I could be in how powerful trade is as a tool. We should not be afraid to use it. It is one of the most powerful tools in the American toolkit, and we shouldn't hesitate in the global contest of ideas, of energy, and of power to recognize that we have the opportunity to lead on the global stage this century. There isn't a go, you, you can give a round of applause for that if you'd like. I'll close where Rob began. I am passionate about Africa. I am passionate about the opportunities across the continent of Africa. 54 countries that have some of the fastest growing economies on earth, the youngest population of any continent, and enormous human and natural resources. AGOA was one of the last bills signed into law by President Clinton. And we've got the opportunity, if we act now, to reauthorize it, modernize it, and extend it. There's an AGOA forum taking place this week here in Washington, D.C. And leading officials from all over the sub-Saharan continent are here, imploring us to extend it early so that investments can be attracted to economies that are growing and can move up the value chain from mere commodity production to manufacturing. With Senator Jim Risch, that crazy liberal from Idaho, I have teamed up to introduce a strong AGOA reauthorization bill, and I would be grateful for the support of everyone here in putting your shoulder to the wheel to make sure that's part of whatever trade package advances this year. So knowing that I'm the last thing between you and a fabulous reception, let me simply thank Sam DuPont, who helps lead economic policy on my team. Please give Sam a round of applause, if you would. Thank you so much for including me in the trade prom. I hope when I retire, I don't have to harass Sam to get a ticket. <laughs> know that trade can and should be strongly bipartisan, and that with good and earnest effort on modernizing the policy, it can end up not being an afterthought, not being a source of division, but being a core and central part of power and of leadership for the United States, the American people, and for the betterment of the world in this century. Thank you for this award. Auf Wiedersehen.